Hi, welcome to the NHK episode 4. So it's actually been a really long time since I watched the show. When we last left Sato, he was sort of ferociously into porn and set on making a video game with Yamazaki in order to prove to Misaki that he was not a hikikomori, which means a recluse person who doesn't have a job or doesn't go to school or basically doesn't contribute to society. So Sato is typing up the scenario for the video game. The animation style seems different in this episode. Everyone's head seems really big. So Yamazaki's like, the thing with these games is that the girls have to fulfill their desires. They don't have to be grounded in reality. They have to like the protagonist for no apparent reason. Because guys who play these games are the kind of guys who can't really get girlfriends in real life. That's what Yamazaki's saying. I'm not making any sweeping generalizations. But... That's what he's saying. Okay, so there's some patterns. Pattern number one, the childhood friend. There's a strong bond that goes back to when they were friends at a young age. Pattern two, a maid. So the master-servant relationship is already established. Pattern number three, robot? She cannot disobey humans because she's a robot. Th those are the only three patterns, childhood friend, maid, and a robot. So Sato has been taking notes furiously. Approach him with pure intentions, attracted to the protagonist for no apparent reason, no ulterior motives, will not betray the protagonist. Sato's like, wait a second, that's exactly what Misaki did to me, all four of those things. So it's kind of interesting. So he's like 21, 22, she's like 17, but she calls him Sato-kun. So two days have gone by and Sato hasn't accomplished anything. Sato's like, it's hard because I don't have maids, I don't really have childhood friends, and I certainly don't have robots. Yamazaki's like, stop thinking about reality, God! So Yamazaki's like, come on, we're going outside. Sato's like, no! So they go out. There's a sacred land of these guys who all get together who play these video games. So they go into the city, go down these stairs, and they go into a maid cafe. And uh, if you've never been into a maid cafe, it's like the girls dress up in maid outfits and they speak in really, really formal Japanese and they basically just treat you like their master. And I know there are some places you can go where you can get pictures with them where you have to pay money. And there's always like a hierarchy of like the cutest girls to like the least cute girls. <laughs> I have to admit, I have been to a maid cafe once. So they go into a doujinshi shop. Which is basically like, if you take fan fiction and then make it a comic, then it's like a fan comic. Where they like, hook up characters from TV shows, usually in a romantic situation. So like, someone could do a Welcome to the NHK doujinshi where Yamazaki and Sato hook up. But it's not canon, because a fan made it. And Sato's like, oh my god, this place is amazing! I'm really kind of disappointed with the, the animation style of this episode. It's kind of making the experience less fun. So he's kind of getting like, overly excited about some of these things that he's seeing in the shop. So he ends up buying some of the stuff. This is, like, I'm sorry, this is so pathetic. <laughs> so the figure he bought also comes with mini games and desktop accessories and pictures. Oh, they're becoming such good friends over their mutual nerdiness. So they discuss what they have to do in order to be successful. They have to break the status quo. They can't just make another rehash of the same game. So they'll follow the same patterns, but implement radical changes. Sato's like, I'm about to be hit with inspiration, this is so awesome. So he's thought of the heroine. She's a robot and a maid and your childhood friend who lives next door. And Yamazaki's like, oh my god, that's a great idea. So they're also lovers from a previous life. And she's feeble and dependent. <laughs> she sustained injuries that took a year to heal because she sacrificed herself for the protagonist. And she's an alien, and she's a reincarnation of a fox that came from the future, and she's also a ghost. And yeah, Mizaki's furiously drawing a picture of her. Sato doesn't like it, and he rips it in half. And Sato's like, no, no, that's, it's too much, it's ridiculous. So Yamazaki forgets something at the store, so he runs back to get it, leaving Sato alone in the smoker's room with all the stuff. He's just like watching the city. 
and he takes the contract out of his pocket from Misaki. And he looks up, and standing outside the smoker's place is not Misaki, but Senpai. All right, that's the end of that episode. So it's kind of interesting that Yamazaki is kind of serving as a friend figure for Sato, when in reality, he's kind of the villain, because we want Sato to escape this hikikomori life, but it seems that Yamazaki's purpose is to drag him back into it. Even though he makes Sato go out and experience the world, and go to the city, and go to the park, he's only doing it to expose him to all of these various things that will make him more and more recluse. So I find that interesting, and I wonder if Sato will realize it. Or maybe I'm just looking too much into this. <laughs> As I normally do. See you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. Or day. Depending on when you watch this. Bye bye.